For 20 years, pilots have been told that more screens mean more safety. The truth? Fatal accident rates haven't fallen. In some cases, they have crept up. Why does a cockpit packed with G1000 technology create a new breed of disaster, while the so-called old-school panel quietly stacks the odds for survival? If the industry's promise was progress, why are experienced instructors warning a generation to look up? What is actually at risk every time your eyes drop to that shimmering glass? The answer begins with a single, overlooked habit. The cockpit is quiet, except for the hum of electronics and the steady pulse of the engine. A traffic icon blinks onto the glass display and the pilot's gaze drops, drawn into the digital world. Instructors call this the fish finder effect. It has become second nature for a new generation of pilots. The promise is simple. Traffic information on the screen will keep you safe. But the reality is that every glance inside comes at a cost. Eye tracking studies reveal the pattern. When a traffic information icon appears, pilots spend up to 65% of their time staring at the glass, their outside scan rate dropping to nearly 1% in cruise. Even during approach and landing, when eyes should be searching for traffic, fixation on the display stays high. The numbers do not lie. In glass-equipped cockpits, heads-down time is double, sometimes triple, what it is with analog gauges. The moment the alert sounds, attention narrows. Instead of scanning the horizon for a real airplane, the pilot waits for the next beep or flashing symbol. The habit forms fast. Trust the icon, trust the technology, hope the system catches everything. But out the window, a Cessna or Piper can slip by unnoticed. The FAA collision risk data shows that even with ADSB, the average time from traffic sighting to avoidance is just over 12 seconds. That is not much, especially when eyes are glued to a screen. Instructors see it daily. Students in the pattern, heads buried in the display, miss traffic turning base. Experienced pilots, lulled by the comfort of digital alerts, lose the discipline of the outside scan. It is not just a new way of flying, it is a new kind of blindness. The screen promises safety, but it quietly steals the most important habit in aviation, looking out the window. A single analog airspeed indicator delivers one message, how fast you are flying right now. The needle moves, your eyes catch it, and your brain needs only a split second to process the information. In the G1000, that same inch of screen is packed with five competing numbers. Airspeed, ground speed, true airspeed, Mach number, and a magenta trend vector. Each value updates in real time, flickering as the sensors feed in new data. The promise is efficiency, more information, less scanning. But the reality is mental clutter. To find the number you actually need, your mind has to filter out every other value, every color, every moving symbol. The trend vector jumps ahead, hinting at where your speed will be in 6 seconds. Ground speed and true airspeed fight for your attention, each relevant at different moments but never at once. Mark number, usually meaningless in a Cessna or Piper, still flashes on the display, a legacy of airliners grafted onto light planes. Studies in cockpit design measure this as cognitive load, the effort it takes to pick out the right data from a crowded field. In glass cockpits, that load is higher. Eye tracking experiments show pilots pausing, scanning left to right, searching for the one value that matters. In a crisis, the delay compounds. Instead of a glance and a decision, there is a moment of hesitation, a mental filter sorting signal from noise. That split second can be the difference between catching a decaying airspeed or missing the warning signs of a stall. Analog panels force a discipline, one gauge, one meaning. Glass displays offer a buffet, but each extra number is another decision, another chance for confusion. The data density that is sold as a safety upgrade can become a liability, especially when time is short and the stakes are high. A vacuum pump failure in a classic six-pack cockpit is a moment every seasoned pilot trains for. The artificial horizon and heading indicator fade, leaving two blank faces on the panel. But the rest of the instruments, airspeed, altimeter, and turn coordinator, keep ticking. The pilot's hands stay steady. 
With no attitude gyro, the turn coordinator and the simple feel of the yoke become the guide. This is partial panel flying, a skill woven into every check ride since the 1940s. In the simulator, a survivor of countless cross-country flights demonstrates the drill. Airspeed and altitude are cross-checked with the needle, not the screen. The slip skid ball gives honest feedback. The turn coordinator's little airplane keeps wings level. Even the vertical speed indicator, often ignored, becomes a lifeline for holding a safe descent. There is no panic, just a shift in scan. The pilot leans on muscle memory, built from years of analog practice. Mechanical failures are not rare. Vacuum pumps, with lifespans of 500 to 1000 hours, are notorious for quitting without warning. Yet, NTSB records show that when a vacuum-driven gyro dies, most pilots make it home. The numbers tell the story. About 12 incidents per 100,000 hours, with survival rates over 85%. The reason is simple, redundancy. Even when two instruments go dark, four remain alive. The panel degrades, but it never disappears. That margin is what keeps control in the pilot's hands, even when the system stumbles. Night flight over the countryside, autopilot humming, the cockpit glows with the steady light of a glass panel. Then, without warning, the screen flickers. A bright red X replaces the horizon. The PFD is gone. Attitude, airspeed, heading, all wiped out in a single second. The silence is broken by a sharp intake of breath. The pilot's hands freeze over the yoke, eyes locked on the lifeless display. There is no gentle fade, no warning, just darkness, and the dull red X staring back. Electrical faults, or AHRS, failures in glass cockpits are rare, but when they strike, the outcome is abrupt and total. In the G-1000 fleet, NTSB records show 47 incidents of PFD blackouts from 2005 to 2024. More than half happened at night or in instrument conditions. In those moments, pilots must transition instantly to a standby instrument, often a palm-sized backup, dimly lit, easily overlooked during routine flights. The workload spikes. Muscle memory. Built on screen scanning offers no help. Every scan pattern, every habit is suddenly useless. Cockpit audio from real incidents tells the story. Breathing quickens, checklists rustle. The search for a familiar reference point becomes frantic. In a 2018 Cessna crash, the pilot's final words were a desperate attempt to regain control, fixated on a screen that would not return. Insurance data shows these blackouts are two to five times deadlier per incident than old-fashioned vacuum failures. When the panel dies, there is no partial solution, just a mad scramble for a backup. In the darkness, the line between survival and disaster narrows to the width of a single, neglected instrument. A stopwatch sits on the glare shield. The trainer cues the scenario, autopilot off, hands on the yoke. The pilot's eyes dart between the magenta line and the horizon, but for a moment, nothing happens. Five seconds tick by before the first control input. In that gap, the airplane has already started to drift. This is not theory, it is measured. During automation surprise drills, when the autopilot disconnects without warning, line pilots and students alike show a consistent lag. The average catch-up time hovers around 5 seconds, sometimes stretching to 8 in high workload or low visibility conditions. Airline training departments have documented this effect for years. The phenomenon earned its name in the early 2000s. It is called Children of the Magenta Line. The magenta is the color of the autopilot path on glass displays, and the children are the pilots who have learned to trust it more than their own hands. The drill runs again. The trainer watches the clock, marking the interval from disconnect to the first meaningful pitch or roll correction. In glass cockpits, the pause is longer. Eyes search for cues, hands hesitate, brains rebuild the mental model from a sea of numbers and symbols. The analog pilot reacts sooner, guided by habit and feel. For glass-trained pilots, the transition from managed to manual flight is not instant. It is a hidden window where the airplane is flying itself and the pilot is catching up. This delay is not just a quirk of airline simulators. 
FAA and NASA studies in the 1990s and the 2000s found similar lags, 4 to 8 seconds on average, when pilots were forced off automation in complex scenarios. In single pilot general aviation, the gap matters even more. There is no co-pilot to nudge you back. There is no time to debate. 5 seconds at 120 knots is nearly a quarter mile. In that space, altitude can decay, heading can wander, and the margin for error shrinks. The trainer's stopwatch does not lie, the air lag is real, and it is built into the way we now fly. A magenta line stretches across the display, promising certainty with every pixel. The trend vector, glowing pink, projects where the airplane will be in six seconds. Pilots are taught to watch it, to nudge the yoke and chase the line, believing that staying on the magenta path means staying safe. But every glance at the trend vector is a glance away from the real world. Hands move, not because of what the airplane feels like, but to satisfy the demands of a digital forecast. The feedback loop shifts from the seat of your pants to the flicker of a number. In practice, this changes how flying feels. Instead of sensing a climb in your fingertips or hearing the engine labor, you wait for a number to climb or a line to bend. The airplane becomes a math problem, not a living machine. In turbulence, the urge to correct every twitch on the screen leads to over-control, chasing the magenta instead of riding out the bumps. The result is a pilot who reacts to symbols, not sensations. Flight instructors notice the pattern. Students, especially those raised on glass, fixate on predicted values instead of present reality. They fly by expectation, not by experience. When the trend vector shortens, the hand tightens on the throttle, even if the nose feels right. When the magenta line drifts, the yoke moves to recenter it, regardless of what the wings are actually doing. The discipline of looking outside, of listening to the engine, and feeling the controls erodes with every hour spent chasing digital cues. A veteran flight instructor sums it up. The magenta line is a tool, not a truth. If you chase it, you stop flying the airplane. You start flying the computer's idea of the airplane. The lesson is simple, trust your senses first, the screen second. The trend vector is only as good as the pilot who knows when to ignore it. A pilot steps up to the avionics shop counter, ready to modernize an aging panel. The shop owner slides an invoice across the desk. The total is $49,870 for a full G1000 retrofit, parts, labor, certification, and paperwork. The sticker shock is immediate, and it is only the beginning. The subscription that comes with the hardware is $500 a year for database updates, charts, and navigation data miss a payment and key features go dark. The bill is not a one-time investment, it is a commitment to ongoing fees and future upgrades. For many owner pilots, this is the price of entry to the digital age. The shop owner points to a line item for software patches and another for screen replacements. LCD panels fade and burn in over time, and each fix runs into thousands of dollars. The promise of future-proof technology comes with a catch, Every few years, a new update or hardware revision arrives, and the old system becomes unsupported. The shop owner has a drawer full of obsolete GPS units, once cutting edge, now impossible to repair or update. Analog panels tell a different story. An altimeter from 1975 sits on the shelf, still airworthy, still legal, still accurate. The cost to overhaul is a few hundred dollars every decade. The G1000, by contrast, is a rolling contract. The money spent on a retrofit could have paid for decades of flying, fuel, and maintenance. For some, the numbers alone are enough to pause the upgrade. For others, the recurring bills are a silent drain, money that could have kept the airplane in the sky instead of tied to a subscription. A shop owner leans over the counter, hands resting on a stack of paperwork. The question isn't about price, it's about time. In the world of avionics, time is the difference between flying and sitting on the ground. Every week, someone calls looking for a replacement screen or a circuit board for a GPS from the 1990s. The answer is almost always the same. No stock, no timeline, 
no promises. The supply chain for these aging electronics has thinned to a trickle. Manufacturers moved on years ago, and what is left is snapped up by shops willing to pay a premium for used parts. When a G1000 display flickers or a processor fails, the entire aircraft can be grounded for months, waiting on a part that may never come. Contrast that with a mechanical altimeter built in 1975. Decades later, it is still serviceable, still legal, and still accurate after a simple overhaul. Analog instruments were designed for longevity. Their parts are standardized, their repairs routine. In most cases, a steam gauge can be pulled, fixed, and reinstalled in a matter of days. There is no software to patch, no database to update, no waiting for a proprietary shipment from halfway around the world. The hidden risk of glass is not in the technology itself, it is in the clock quietly ticking down behind every display. When the screen dies, the airplane goes nowhere. For owner pilots, that is not just a financial headache. It is lost weekends, missed trips, and a machine that is perfectly airworthy in every way but one. The panel is dark, and the world outside the hangar stays out of reach. Right now, thousands of private pilots are trading true situational awareness for digital distraction, often without realizing the risk. As technology grows more seductive, the human element gets sidelined. The data is clear. Modern glass has not made single pilot flying safer. In aviation, skill is not nostalgia, it is survival. Eyes up, hands on. The sky still demands a pilot, not just a programmer. What do you think? Does tech help or hurt? Drop your thoughts below.